Hi, my name is Brandon Victoriano and I'm one of the equipment managers at SCTV. And today I'll be going over a brief introduction to the editing software DaVinci Resolve. There will really be only two goals we'll be trying to achieve by the end of this video. These are one, introducing the edit tab, and two, introducing an editing workflow appropriate for Resolve. So without further ado, let's get started. So when you boot up DaVinci Resolve for the first time, it should look a little something like this. And maybe you'll have a few preliminary windows asking you for certain settings and preferences, uh, you know, just when you open the, the app for the very first time. Um, but after getting through those, uh, you should come to a window like this. And in this window, you can see all your current projects you're working on. Since I just downloaded the app, we have none. So we're just gonna click on Untitled Project. When you open up a new project, Resolve might stick you in the Cut tab but today we'll be covering just the edit tab. So if we go to the bottom of the screen and click on the edit icon, we can move ourselves to the edit tab. And of course we have other tabs that DaVinci Resolve features, but we won't cover those in today's video. So anyways, this is the edit tab. This is where you'll be crafting your timeline and stitching all your footage together. Right now, the edit tab is looking a little messy. So what I'm going to do is head on over to the workspace menu and hit reset UI layout. Hitting this should bring you to the default setup for the edit tab. Now let's go ahead and bring some media into our project. An easy way to do this is to resize our window and simply drag and drop our media right into Resolve. When you import media, Resolve might ask you if you want to change your project frame rate and you'll usually want to hit change as this can save time in setting up your project. In the description of this video, there should be a link to where you can download these same files so that you can edit along with me. When you import media, those files will be located in what's called the media pool. In the media pool, you can create folders to further organize your files. So if we right click in the media pool and hit new bin, let's rename that footage. And then right click again and name this one audio. We can go ahead and select our clips and you hold shift to select multiple. We can drag our clips into our newly created bins. With these bins, we can either view them in icon or list view. In list view, we can see columns showing specific data for each clip. We can customize these columns by simply dragging the names to different positions or if we right click on real name, we can select and deselect columns to determine what information we see. By clicking the three dots here, we can also select Show Film Strip. Now, when we select a clip, we can easily scrub through our footage. If we double click a clip, we are able to load our clip into the source viewer. The source viewer is where we mark clips in and out to decide which portion of a clip you want to place into your timeline. This method of editing is useful so that when you go and edit, you don't have to manipulate your clips directly in your timeline and you can kind of pre-edit and cut before sticking it into your main composition. Now to the right of the source viewer, we have the timeline view. This is where you can view your edited sequence. Underneath both of these monitors, we have the toolbar and this holds all of the most commonly used tools when editing. By dragging and dropping a clip from our media pool into our timeline, we can start our sequence. We can scrub through our footage by clicking and dragging the playhead. Now, while we're in the source monitor, let's find the frame at which we want to start our clip and let's hit mark in. Now we go and find our final frame and then we hit mark out. These same actions can also be accomplished by hitting the I and O keys on your keyboard, respectively. Now, of course, we can go ahead and drag this into our timeline and the clip will only have our selected frame range. But if we mouse over our source monitor, we can see two options of a film strip and an audio waveform appear. By dragging from either of these icons, we can choose to insert either just the clip's audio or video. Alternatively, we can drag the clip from our source monitor into our timeline viewer and select the type of edit we want. So as you can see, since we selected the insert edit option, the clip was inserted into where the playhead was located, regardless of the location of other clips within the timeline. Also, just a reminder, these same edits and actions can be performed with your audio files. So let's go into our audio folder and drag our song into the timeline. Once we do this, Resolve will automatically create a new audio track for you, depending on where you place your file. If we right click on our audio track, we can even change the color for some further organization. Now, if we go to this icon that looks like two little arrows, 
This is called your auto select button. And this is handy because when we deselect this, when we go and insert a clip, now our music will not be disrupted by the audio of the clip. Another headache saver is this lock button where when selected, the contents of the track will now be locked and can't be edited or moved around. To adjust audio levels, you can simply drag up or down the white line in your audio file within your timeline. When cutting clips, especially with dialogue in them, it can be helpful to see a kind of visual representation of our audio. And we can do just that by hitting the option menu in the source monitor and then hitting show zoomed audio waveform. Now let's take a look at the toolbar. There are a lot of options featured in this menu, but let's just go over the more frequently used tools. On the left, we have the basic editing tools. The selection tool is your most commonly used tool as it can move clips around in your timeline. Another tool we have is the blade tool, which allows you to slice up clips directly on your timeline. Finally, we have the snap tool, which is denoted by the magnet symbol and this allows you to align clips more precisely and accurately, hence the snap. On the right, we have a slider to zoom in and out of our timeline. Alternatively, we can use the command plus or command minus keys. By hitting shift Z, we can also revert back and forth between the full view of the timeline and the view at which you were previously working at. For other ways to view your screen, you can also press command F and this will full screen your viewer. We can also use the scroll wheel on our mouse while mousing over the timeline viewer to change your view. Now let's explore the effects library in Resolve. It's located in the top left of the screen and if we hit that and go to video transitions, we can see a library of pre-made video transitions. By dragging and dropping transitions to your clips, you can seamlessly transition your clips one after the other. You can further customize these transitions by clicking them and dragging them. You can also double click them to open up the inspector uh, for more precise adjustments. Now let's add some blur to our images. If we go into the effects library, by selecting and dragging Gaussian blur, we can instantly blur our video. And this can be useful when you need to censor certain content. For our final effect, let's go to the title section and select basic title generator. By going into the inspector, we can type out whatever we want. In the fusion section, we can even apply a lower third simple underline for a more fancy effect. And that's basically it. I hope I covered enough features in this video for you to be able to start working on your own projects using DaVinci Resolve. This editing software is completely free and you can find the download link in the description below. Thanks for watching and happy editing.